Ty, can you talk a little bit about uh, the history of the American Medical American Medical Association, how it came about. That's one of the things that you uh, that you touch on. The AMA. Yeah, yeah. Um, the history of the AMA. I think it was 1910, and John Rockefeller, with uh, Standard Oil, mm -hmm. hired a guy named Flexner, Abraham Flexner, to go around and basically analyze whether medical schools in the United States were performing up to par. Uh, so he, he, he hired Flexner to go around and, 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 and look at all the medical schools to see if they were performing adequately. Now, mm -hmm. when I say performing adequately, what that really meant underneath the facade was, are they prescribing enough drugs? Because see, Rockefeller not only, only uh, owned oil companies, but he also owned chemical companies that made drugs. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to make sure that they were prescribing enough of the drugs because it's all about the money, right? And so he hired Flexner. Flexner went around, and I can't remember the numbers, in the mid-200s of, of medical schools at that time. And basically, any medical schools that were using naturopathy, herbs, anything natural, didn't make the grade. Whether they were doing well at it or not. It was, see, the, the thing was, it was a predetermined outcome. Okay, it wasn't really to see if they were uh, practicing medicine and healing people. The, the question was, are they prescribing enough drugs? And so what happened is all these medical schools that were actually doing very well and teaching naturopathy and teaching herbs, they got axed. They weren't approved by the AMA anymore, right? And so what happened then is you have a very small group of medical schools afterwards that were, that were basically, that basically made the grade. And now what do they do? What do they all do? They all teach drug-intensive mm -hmm. treatment for disease. And so that's what we have today, and that's carried over the last 60, whatever, 80 years. Now we have medical schools that are all drug intensive. They're owned by big pharmaceutical companies. All the, all the, the doctors learn in medical school is drugs, treatment of disease with drugs, mm -hmm. because it's all about the money. And so you look at this revolving door of medical school personnel, FDA personnel, drug company personnel, you look at it behind the scenes and you see all of these organizations are controlled by the same people. They're making money off of everything. And so medical schools will not allow natural medicine to be taught. Why? Because, because the same people that are running the medical schools are running the pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. are running the FDA. It's all about selling drugs. I mean, so let's say you go out and you have a plant and there's a substance in the plant that you find out cures cancer. You can't patent the plant. Mm -hmm. But what the, what the drug companies will do is they'll go in and they'll take that substance from the plant and they'll tweak it. They'll make chemical changes to it and they'll patent it now because now it's become a drug. Of course, now it doesn't work anymore once they tweak it. Mm -hmm. See, God made things, they work naturally. But now when you tweak it, it doesn't work anymore. But they'll patent it and then they'll mark it up 60,000% and sell it as a drug to treat XYZ disease. Mm -hmm. That's the whole protocol for medical schools now. That's the whole way that we practice medicine. Pharmaceutical companies find a substance that works on a, on a disease, they tweak it, sell it, make billions of dollars, but it no longer works to treat the disease. But that's okay, though, because what's the purpose of medicine today? It's not to heal. See, that used to be the purpose of medicine. Now the purpose of medicine is to perpetuate sickness, because then you've got a gravy train of, of, of cancer patients and other patients that are sick with other diseases that have a revolving door back to the doctor's office to be treated. Because the doctor treats them for disease A with drug B, and drug B causes symptoms C, D, and E that all have to be treated with other drugs. And then they treat symptoms C, D, and E with more drugs, three more drugs. That causes side effects. Got to go back to the doctor for more prescriptions. And before you know it, you've got a patient that went in for a, a, a wart on his knee, and now he's on 15 prescription drugs. And then, of course, that's a little bit exaggerated. Mm -hmm. But you kind of see the, the, you see the way that it works today. Mm -hmm. That's the way modern medicine works. It's not about keeping people well, it's about keeping them sick because that ensures a steady stream of revenue for the pharmaceutical companies and for the doctors. Can the American Cancer Society fit into that same mold? I mean, we've, I've heard numerous times that one of the things that they build themselves on is when there's a cure for cancer that they will disband, but that's a huge, huge organization. Oh, yeah. Most people can't just see them just shutting up the doors and walking away. 
does, do they kind of fit into the same mold as the AMA yes. that they perpetuate? This, yeah, they're all in, in part of opinion? what. Yeah, they're all part of what I call the uh, the cancer industry in the book. Mm -hmm. Also, I call the medical mafia. Right. But uh, yeah, the ACS is part of that because they do have written into their bylaws that if a cure for cancer is found, they will immediately disband. Now, when you've got a, the president of the, of the ACS makes over two million dollars a year in salary and benefits, is he rooting for a cure? <laughs> No. Come on. Yeah. And then you can look and see where the funds go. I think it was 79% or maybe 81%, close to 80% of the funds that the ACS takes in on, the, on their cancer drives to find a cure goes for drug research. Mm -hmm. And we've never had a drug. We haven't had a tr cancer drug yet that's cured cancer. There's always, they're always almost there. They're one step away. The cure is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Just open your pocketbook up and write that check. We are so close to having a cure. We've been doing that since 1972. There's, no, there's never been a cure, a drug cure for cancer yet, and there won't ever be. Conventional medicine will never cure, uh, have a, dr a cure for cancer. Number one, because drugs don't cure cancer. And number two, they don't want a cure. I'm not saying that the people that are down there collecting the money for the ACS mm -hmm. are bad people. They're ignorant as far as what's going on with their funds. Because there's no funds going into into herbal treatments or nutrition. Or it's all into drug like research. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. all into drug research. And as we've already talked about, drugs don't cure cancer. Chemotherapy doesn't cure cancer. Chemotherapy kills your immune system, so the cancer can temporarily go under remission, and they can come back and kill you in 16 months. Because then you have no immune system left. Mm -hmm. There is no cure for cancer from drugs. But all of the money that comes in, 80% of it to the American Cancer Society, goes to drug research. What's wrong with that picture?